Welcome back to the channel guys, my name is Amit and in today's video we're going to be talking about my 12 month update of the hair transplant that I got from Turkey. For those who don't know, I did not have any hair at all before this. I basically had hair loss at the age of 23 and since that time my hair has basically been completely lost. My hairline, my mid scalp and even my crown were all completely gone. So I decided to go and get a hair transplant in Istanbul, Turkey at Vera Clinic. The first time I went, I got 6,100 grafts extracted from my donor area and placed onto my hairline and mid scalp. I documented that entire journey on the channel and over time, I've seen my hair grow so much that even I've been shocked at how much it actually had grown. However, at the time, the clinic could not complete my crown, so I had to go back a second time and this time I got 4,000 grafts extracted from my donor area and placed onto my crown and a little bit on my mid scalp and as well as on my hairline. And of course, I've been documenting that entire journey on this channel as well from the start of the first month up until today, which is about the one year mark. Now, I try to be as transparent as I can on my channel and hopefully educate those out there who are also going through a similar situation as me. Anyone who is looking to get a hair transplant or someone who has already gotten one and just needs a little help and assistance out there, my videos hopefully help you guys in that sense. And if you do like content like this, definitely do consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And of course, if you just want to see me grow a full head of hair. All right, so let's talk about this update. So it's been 12 long months since I got my second hair transplant in Turkey for my crown. And I'll be very honest with you, it hasn't been as successful as my first. And let, let me explain. First hair transplant that I got from Turkey, in my opinion, was a huge success. I literally had no hair on my hairline or my mid scalp. And the fact that it grew out so much over time and how thick it got really quickly, you know, I was, I was ecstatic. I was really happy. But obviously going back for the second time, I felt a little more confident that my hair would probably grow out the same just as it did the first time, but it unfortunately was not the case. Getting the crown done meant that it would take a little longer compared to how the first hair transplant went. And although I'm at my one year mark, I still have about six months to go to hopefully see it in its full dense state. Throughout this entire year, my hair has grown quite a bit. I've seen so much of hair growth to a point whereby I've started keeping my hair out long and basically cover up the entire crown. I had moments throughout this year that it was looking as if I didn't even have a hair transplant whereby it covered the crown completely but I've also had moments where after getting haircuts everything gets exposed. Maybe that's not a good sign of getting a hair transplant and it's not as dense as some would hope but on a personal level I'm still pretty happy with how it's turning out because at the end of the day I never had that much hair on my head and the fact that I have some now I can't complain. I'm very happy with how it looks. In my last month's video, I did talk about getting a haircut that was a bit too short and unfortunately, I went on a little rant about how I made a mistake in finding the wrong barber, getting the cut, and basically exposing my entire scalp yet again. This time around, I found a really good barber and I was very happy that I went to him and basically explained exactly the situation that happened last time and what I was hoping to avoid. He completely understood me and thankfully, after telling him that I was looking for a specific type of cut, he managed to execute. One really nice interesting point was that he thanked me for letting him know that I had a hair transplant because he had people who had haircuts from him before never tell him that and then when he was trimming down their donor areas, he could see some scars and he was worried whether that was his fault or not. So he was really thankful that I told him and he understood that, okay, you've had two hair transplants so if I see a little irregularity on your donor area, it makes sense. Now, as you can see from the shortcut, my hairline and mid scalp look totally fine. Truth be told, the hair on the crown doesn't look as dense or thick as I would have hoped, but I don't like to look at things in negative lights. I think that previously I had no hair there, and now I do, and that's all I can be thankful for. Getting a hair transplant is not easy. It's a roller coaster of emotions over time, and if you can understand what it takes to get to a point of hopeful happiness, you have to understand the ups and downs that come with it. I'm just writing all the highs and lows together and I'm sharing those moments with you guys. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. And over time, I really hope my hair does grow and I hope that you guys also are there for the ride. All right, with that, let's jump right into the 360 view of my hairline, my mid scalp, my crown, as well as my donor area. As always, me staring into the camera is awkward, but at least my hairline is still looking fab after two years. The size of the donor area has held up very well, even after the latest haircut. The back of my donor area looks good as well. You can barely tell I've had a hair transplant. The crown honestly isn't looking as bad as I first thought, 
and I'm pretty happy with its current state. And finally, the other side of my donut area looks super clean and neat. You can barely see any scarring at all. And now let's jump straight into the close-ups of the hairline, the mid scalp, as well as the crown. So after two years, my hairline is holding up pretty well. I haven't seen any drastic changes in the last few months, but it still looks good overall. The mid scalp as well, I did add an extra 600 grafts here, which has really filled in over time. I'm pretty pleased at how it's looking. Now for the crown, I think as long as I'm keeping the length of my hair longer at the back of my crown, I can get some good coverage to have it look pretty natural. Considering I came from nothing, this looks great. Now I'll show you the monthly progress of a top-down view of my head as well as the crown from the first month up until the one year mark today. Month one to four was the most difficult period to get through with the slow hair growth, shedding, and shock loss. Month five to eight, however, I started to see some hairs to come out on the crown and it gave me some hope. Month nine to 11 is where I saw more density coming in at the back. And finally, month 12 is where today it feels like I almost have a full head of hair on my head again. All right, as usual, I'm going to give you the aftercare updates that I usually take every single day. I start out with taking 0.5 milligrams of finasteride. I still do believe finasteride is really important in your hair transplant journey. Depending on how much of hair loss you've had in the past, Finasteride is very essential in keeping what you had back then, even after your hair transplant. You want to try to avoid to get a second hair transplant and with doing that, taking Finasteride really helps because again, it keeps the existing hairs that you have on your head. Over time, you don't lose that and it grows together with your transplanted hairs. There are side effects to Finasteride. I am thankful enough that I've never experienced any, but if you do ever experience any type of side effects, wait two weeks and your body will kind of get back to normal. It'll be totally fine. The other things that I take every single morning are my very, very elaborate amount of vitamins. I'll list a bunch on the screen here for you, but one of the most important ones that I think is very useful for hair growth is biotin and B-complex. Definitely do consider getting those because those are very, very helpful for your hair growth. Now, another essential part of gaining your hair back is using minoxidil. I use minoxidil every morning and night, and I use a minoxidil foam called Growplex. I've been using it for the past year and a half, and I have had no complaints about it. I've seen my hair grow over time thanks to it, especially on my hairline and mid-scalp. My crown, of course, does take a little while longer, but I do still see growth from it. I also do some derma rolling on the areas that I want my hair to be growing. I do that maybe once or twice a week on my scalp. I find derma rolling super useful as well because it gives me the opportunity to help my hair grow back even quicker. Of course, using it together with minoxidil also helps because once those pores are open on your scalp, the scalp absorbs that minoxidil foam completely and it gets right into your blood supply. I would highly recommend it. I have a discount code with it as well if you're interested. Definitely check it out. It's definitely useful for you and definitely has been useful for me. Another really essential thing that I like to use is my shampoo and conditioners. I have been using the Revita Hair Density Shampoo and Conditioner every other day to wash my scalp. I use the shampoo about four times a week and I use the conditioner maybe once a week. I usually apply it in the evenings once I've applied all of my solutions and oils and whatnot. So by the end of the day, I'm able to wash it all off and have a clean scalp before I head to bed. I do feel that it helps provide more density overall and it's been pretty useful for me. So I would definitely recommend it. If you're interested in getting the product, I have a discount code below. Definitely check it out and try it for yourself. And lastly, I have been using rosemary oil. I did speak about this in a couple of other monthly videos that I had stopped using it because it was causing me some scalp irritation. But honestly, I've gotten to a flow whereby it works perfectly fine now. I believe that scalp irritation was probably because of something else. I usually put three or four drops onto my scalp at the start of my morning and let it sit throughout the day. And then again, at the end of my night, as I wash my head off, I try to sleep with a clean scalp. The last thing that, again, I talk about a lot is fibers. Although I try to stay away from fibers because now that I've gotten my hair back, I feel more confident to not be needing to use it. And truth be told, I've been walking around and doing my own things and just kind of carefree. I just walk around with my head open like this without worrying that, oh, someone's going to stare at my hair that's still not fully grown. It's totally fine. To me, it's okay. I'm past that stage now where I have to worry about too much because again, I have more hair than I had before. So if somebody's pointing out that, oh, you're losing hair, I'm like, no, no, I'm gaining hair. I'm not losing hair. I'm, ga I'm gaining hair. <laughs> so yeah, so the fact that I had I'm trying to stay away from fibers, that's totally fine. However, it is a fantastic product for anyone who wants to still conceal a couple of bald spots on their scalp. I still do use it. Don't get me wrong, I still use it because I, for one, I'm getting married 
in very soon. And I'm not super confident of having my scalp not look full on my wedding day. So I'm definitely going to be using it during that. But again, it works wonders. It covers up areas and no one would ever notice a thing unless you kind of, you know, show them that, hey, look, I'm wearing fibers, but you'll never do that. It helps. And if you are interested in getting it, I have, again, links to all the products below that I would recommend. Definitely do check that out as it, I believe it is super helpful for you. So you guys have been following me along this journey for the past two years, and I'm extremely grateful if you have. My hair transplants have been life-changing for me, but at the same time, I hope they've inspired you guys as well. If you need any help with any type of hair transplant related stuff, I'm here to help you guys as well. I have a one-on-one -on -one hair transplant consultation service that you can book some time with me and we can have a conversation about you, whether about your hair loss journey or if you want to try to get a hair transplant and you need some advice or if you've already gotten one and you know you just need some guidance on what to do. I've had so many people who I've been able to help over these past two years and I am just extremely grateful to be able to be that person to help assist wherever I can. So if you want to have that type of guidance as well, Book some time with me. There's a link in the description below and let's try to see if we can start that conversation. I think that's all for me for today. I'm really happy with how my progress has been going and there's just a lot more to look forward to. Not just about my hair, but I am getting married in the next week and I'm super excited about it. So if you don't hear from me for a little while, that's, that's probably why. But I do hope that you guys are still going to be following along my journey. I'm still going to make it to that 18 month mark and continue giving you guys as many updates as I can and to be as real and transparent with you as well. I will hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And I'll probably be married by then. So catch you guys soon. Peace.